When I was 12, still climbing trees, I fell instead and landed on my head. Feeling lighter, I thought I might become a writer. Hip-hop, dancing in the rain, a nature writer I became. The hills, the people, and the simple joys of life. That's the land of Missouri. A fascinating hill resort with its varied flora and fauna. Commanding snow ranges to the northeast, Shivalik ranges in the south, and glittering views of the Doom Valley. It is like a fairy land. Missouri Landor was once called the Queen of the Hills and rightly so. The road leading us to these hills is a constant reminder of nature's call to experience peace and tranquility. In the heart of this beautiful place lives the famous writer and our childhood hero, Ruskin Bond. We have come to Missouri to meet him. Hi, how are you? Thank you. I hope you had a nice Yeah. Nice yeah. Mm -hmm. Is everybody mm -hmm. home? No? You're not uh, here? Rakesh and Veena are here. Yes. Acha. Okay. Fishti is up. She's sleeping late. Oh, you had house. your breakfast? Huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is good, rather. Um, the light is good here. Oh, that's, that's very sweet. Yeah, yeah you can take it. <laughs> <laughs> Chari, huh? Yes, he used to be with the statesman. He knows the town inside out. After all, he has been staying here for half a century now. Why did he choose Masuri? Uh, over the years, I think uh, perhaps I became more receptive eh? and closer to nature. And living in the hills made a difference. Hmm? Because obviously, if you're in a city, the opportunity to hmm, to be close to uh, the wilderness or wildlife of any kind is limited. Hmm? Mm. I came to live here in 1964, okay. though I'd seen Missouri as a small boy in the 1940s. Hmm? In fact, did one year in school here, mm. in uh, kindergarten, in a convent school, uh, which I didn't like. Um, the nuns were very strict in those days. Mm. And the food used to be terrible. <laughs> so, uh, and then I've, my father took me out and put me in a school in Simla, mm -hmm. which was also in the hills. So. Ruskin Bond spent his early childhood in Jamnagar and Shimla. At the age of 10, he went to live at his grandmother's house in Dehradun after his father's sudden death in 1944. I was a, quite a bookworm and the, very sensibly I think my uh, the senior masters put me in charge of the school library so I could was able to, whenever I had free time I'd go I'd go to the library and I had the keys you see so I could be there on my own mm -hmm. having to make a living from writing mm -hmm. which is what I decided to do when I was young hmm? okay um, when I started out uh -huh. I said this is the only thing I I'm really good at hmm? Um, and uh, so I, I should make a living from it. Hmm? Uh, and there were a lot of ups and downs, hmm? but, but I did, and uh, I'm still, doing, still making a living from it. <laughs> um, but yes, some school days I wanted to be a writer, I think. Mm -hmm. I must have been 12 when I read David Copperfield. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And David Copperfield, he runs ho away from home, and then when he grows up, he becomes a writer. So to emulate him, I ran away from home. Who's that? That's you. That's me, yeah. Okay, your oh. father took that picture. Oh, right, right, right. That's me at about the age of nine. Hmm? Eight or nine. Hmm? 
down in the foothills near Dehradun. Mm. Um, Were you I, close to your father? Yes, I was. Uh, um, and I lost him when I was 10. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I was close, those last two or three years uh, particularly. Mm. Um, I lived with him in, in Delhi, in uh, just uh, those in the ninth, during World War II. Mm. Mm. He was in the Air Force. And mm. so uh, this was in the mid 40s, 1940s. Mm. So it's in Delhi from uh, before independence. Is mm. that your father's picture? Yeah, Some yeah. That's that? my father. Yeah. Okay. That's my father. This is my mother. Mm. Oh. This, that, that's me in the, in the middle. Mm. Oh, lovely. What are you wearing? Yeah? That's Shirwani. in Achkan or Sherwani. Yeah. yeah. That's in Jamnagar. Because at that time my father was working for the, what the, the Maharaja in those days was called the Jam Saab. Okay. His almost bare room with just one bed, a table and a chair, however, lives up to the title of one of his famous works, A Room of Many Colours. There is green, yellow, even saffron on his walls. The window has its own importance. It sets the scene, so to speak. It's always been a simple life. Uh, in the early years, partly out of necessity, because uh, writing was not a very, um, <clears throat> let's say, a rewarding profession. And rewarding in the financial sense. It was rewarding in many other ways. Um, and then over the years, I found that, well, the simple life is probably the most comfortable and the best and the least complicated way of living. Um, and so today, even if I had uh, a fortune, I, I would, I wouldn't, change my lifestyle. Hmm? Um, it, it suits me. <laughs> and uh, all I need is a, a fa not a very big room, but w uh, certainly a room with a window so that I can look out upon the, the, the sky and the, 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 the changing cloud formations and uh, the mountains and the, the valley below and, and, and the road below because uh, people are important to me as a writer and as a person. And um, without people, there wouldn't be any stories. It was all he needed. Perhaps all that any writer needs. Ruskin Bond has got the ornaments of a writer. The Padma Shri Award on the wall and the Sahitya Academy Award sitting comfortably on his table. He struggled a lot before he got these feathers in his cap. Certainly in India, we had, there were no book fairs. There were no um, uh, readings or book signings as you have today. There, there were no, no such thing as a literary festival. Hmm? These things have suddenly become all the rage. Hmm? Um, so you very much had to, if, if you were a, in fact, there were no writers. Huh? <laughs> um, I would. I don't remember um, meeting a, a well-known writer, of, say, say, from for about four or five years until I came to Delhi, um, and then I had the good fortune to meet Khushwan Singh. And novels were not being published in India. Very f little fiction was. Uh, publishers were either into school books or textbooks or. Mm, but uh, literature wasn't, you had to look abroad for a publisher. Every week, two or three youngsters who say they want to be writers. And of course I warn them, it's, it, you, it can be a very hard and long journey. Um, and maybe, but today it's, it, it isn't so hard and so long perhaps. And uh, after all, you can publish anything you want on the internet too. Hmm? But of course you're not going to get paid for that necessarily. So if, if you want to make a, a living out of writing, you still need a, a publisher who can sell your books eh? or sell your work. Eh? Predictably, Charles Dickens was his favourite in school before the mystery writer Agatha Christie got his fancy. Starting with David Copperfield and then I worked my way through his works almost. Um, and as I s s said earlier, I, uh, I was given charge of the school library which meant I had the keys. So I could sneak off whenever I wanted to, you know, to escape maybe um, other more boring activities in school. 
um, and spend a lot of time there on my own. And uh, so I would read, I remember reading right through Dickens, J.M. Barry's plays, Bernard Shaw, then authors like Somerset Maugham, yeah. H.E. Bates, um, um, Compton Mackenzie, and uh, uh, um, William Saroyan, and also you know, Chekhov, Maupasso, you know, all the classics. Yeah. So I, I had a very good grounding in, in um, literature, in, in at least European and English literature. Yeah. Mm. And um, so I'd read a lot of Tagore in translation too, mm. Mm -hmm. because you could get his books in translation, his own translations at that time. Um, so uh, all these writers did, didn't, I think, influence me with the result that by the time I'd finished school, I'd decided I wanted to be a writer. Mm. His first work, a short story written during school days, was dear to him. Within a couple of months of leaving school, I had a short story published in, in the Illustrated Weekly of India, which was then the sort of premier magazine yeah. It went into every home. Um, <coughs> I don't have that story now. Um, it, it must be in their archives. But um, it got me into trouble because uh, it was a little skit about one of my uh, school teachers. Hmm? Um, and the, the, the headmaster read it back in, in school. And uh, so they didn't, and they didn't send my, my school leaving certificate. I'm still waiting for it. Uh, <laughs> maybe I should send a reminder now. After high school, he was in England for four years. At 15, he wrote his first novel, Room on the Roof. It is a semi-autobiographical story of the orphaned Anglo-Indian boy, Rusty. But he recalls that writing was not a paying profession in those days. That was when I was in London and I fi finally, after writing two or three drafts, found a publisher and I was anxious to come back to India and uh, I got a 50 pound advance. Now, that was the standard advance in the 1950s, 50 pounds. It was enough to come back. The, the, the fare on by, ship, by sea, uh, we traveled by sea in those days. The, the airlines took almost as long, um, it was about 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. So I arrived in Bombay with 10 pounds, 10 pounds over and made my, it was enough to get to Dehradun. Yeah. I chose Missouri because partly I knew the area partly because the surroundings were attractive and I wanted to be near nature. And also for practical reasons, because Missouri is probably the closest hill station to Delhi. And Delhi is where all the publishers are and editors are. So um, I'm also able to keep in touch, keep in touch with them. And uh, from a work point of view, it's also convenient. Compulsion brought him to Masuri, but India has a great attraction for him. India is so vast. I mean, if there's nothing happening up north, there's something happening down south. So um, there's, you know, never a dull moment. You know, one reason I would never want to go and live in another country is that uh, I would get bored to death. Hmm? And you, you, you. There, there are various ways of dying in India, but not from boredom. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, uh, because there's always something happening, hmm? yeah. and um, uh, wherever you go, and um, so it's it's a writer doesn't run out of stories. Hmm? You don't run out of people. You don't run out of friends. You don't run out of uh, um, you know of life. Hmm? Yeah. Whereas perhaps in in Europe or in Britain or in most countries, I would say there's a certain monotony to to life itself. Hmm? Uh, whereas in India, there's tremendous variety, hmm? and variety is the spice of life, as they say. He knows it is difficult to keep pace with changing trends, especially with regard to the taste of Indian readers, which has seen a huge transition from the days of R. K. Narayan to Chetan Bhagat. Uh, and somebody gave me a, a, 
a book the other day and it's it's all in sort of colloquial slang and in um, Gali, as you might say, <laughs> uh, and uh, which you wouldn't have got away with 20 or 30 years back. Tastes and fashions come and go. Hmm? Um, certainly, um, I've been fortunate in that, uh, in spite of what everyone says, there are more readers today than there used to be when I was, when I set out hmm, to, uh, to be a writer. Um, Everyone says the reading habit is dying and young, youngsters aren't reading. Um, but you see, they never did. <laughs> reading was, was always a, a minority pastime. Hmm? And even um, uh, when I was in, uh, let's say, finishing school, 1950, hmm? now in a class of 30 boys, there were just two at the most three of us who, who read books, who were fond of reading. Hmm? Now in those days, there was no television. There was no internet, there were no video games, there were none of the, all the things that we blame today hmm? uh, um, for taking uh, away um, the reading habit. But in spite of that, nobody read, very few did. And so I think it was always a special sort of thing. Hmm? But there is something special about Ruskin Bond's style of writing. It's uh, very personal. It's a it's a style that maybe I have, uh, that I cultivated as a boy, and it hasn't changed all that much over the years. It's got an edge, maybe it's a simple style, it's, um, but it, I go for clarity hmm, rather than simplicity. And um, it's readable, in, and I want it to be readable, hmm, um, whether it's I'm writing for adults or for children. and. Um, I, I write. I think I was influenced. My style was definitely influenced by the writers I read. Hmm? He is literally a writer, for whom even a typewriter is dispensable. I've even given up the typewriter. Now I'm writing right. by hand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the typewriter now is uncomfortable, and also I, because of the computers, I can't. I can't find a typewriter ribbon anywhere. Hmm? The locals love him. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you. His favorite haunt every Saturday is a bookstore on Mall Road. The shop owner is both a friend and a fan. He creates some space for the book lovers for a memorable rendezvous with the author. Means uh, there's something. He wanted my autograph. बहुत धन्यवाद. मैंने आपकी आपकी किताब पढ़ चुकी. आपके नाम क्या है? याकूब. J A. Yeah. You can okay. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. J A. J A C O. J A C O P O. K O. Jacobo. P O. P O. Yes. Jacobo. It's fine. Jacobo. I have a problem sometimes when I go to a bookshop and I'm sitting down and signing books for youngsters. They come in with names that I've sometimes never heard of. You know, you get very unusual names now, and I'm constantly asking them, "How do you spell it? What does it mean?" Sometimes they know the meaning, sometimes they don't. <laughs> but you get very, um, uh, very um, uh, original and unusual names, Natasha. And uh, sometimes you have to also be careful that they might want two A's instead of one, you know, uh, because of some numerical significance may be attached to the uh, the letter and its its numeral, its lucky numeral. They published there. For the last 10-12 years, he's been coming regularly every Saturday to the shop, health and weather permitting, of course, but he's been here. And uh, he seems to be having a magic wand. Even in winters, we find 50, 60 people waiting for him every Saturday who want to meet him, who are his fans. And he caters to all age groups, right, from 6 to 60, or rather 6 to 80, I would say. Everyone is his fan. 
like on a rainy day, I remark, sir, you are my bread and butter. Even on a rainy day, I mean, when you come, some customers walk in. He says, no, you are my jam and marmalade all year through. <laughs> That's the kind of sense of humor he has. He's very witty. Srishti, his great-granddaughter from an adopted child, usually joins her da to this place. She wants to be a doctor, but is excited and happy to be a celebrity at her age. I'm doing a serial for Doodashan and this uh, the serial came 15 years before. So I'm do it's the second part we're doing it again. And I'm playing Kamla, his girlfriend role, so I'm romancing him in the series. And Vipul Gupta is my boyfriend who is playing Rusty in that. I've killed many people in that. I'm a murderer. <laughs> yeah, I've killed um, one of the Rani's and I've killed, uh, I've killed my own father. I'm very dangerous, you know. Often fans ask him about the cameo he made in the film Saat Khun Maaf, based on one of his stories, Susanna's Seven Husbands. That they had to take about nine or ten takes again and again. Uh, at the end of which, at the end of which, the director said, "Mr. Bond, I think you're doing this deliberately." <laughs> The twinkle in his eye is hard to miss. But away from the crowd, Ruskin born has his own world. Where the sights of hills, trees and lonely tracks inspire him. The sun is setting, perhaps the best time to join him on one of those inspiring tracks. The longer you live, the more memories you have, the more you have to, hmm. in a way, more people you've met and known, and the more stories you have to tell. So you don't run out of mm, material. Right. Now, when I was 16, 17, I wrote The Room on the Roof, and then I didn't know what to write next, mm. you know, because I'd sort of used up my experience in mm. a way. The stories like Night Train at Deoli and Train Stops at Shamali are an expression of Ruskin Bond's life. A lot of the stories I wrote when I was in my 20s, mm. No, quite romantic hmm? uh, stories like Night Train at Dioli and Time Stops at Shamli and others. Yeah. That was my romantic period. Mm. Um, and, and into my 30s, yes. Hmm. Yeah, early 30s. Hmm. Hmm. Um, but then you decided to stay single. Now it's my humorous period. Ah, <laughs> I know. Point. But you decided <laughs> to stay single. Hmm? Yeah, right. Um, at times, um, it, it just, I almost uh, did get married once or twice, but mm. somehow it didn't come about. <clears throat> but um, and I have no regrets, actually. His eternal love for ghosts is not a secret. He never had to try too hard to scare us. Does it come naturally to him? It's also a sort of, in a way, a safe fear, because you, fr you feel, uh, you, you f scare yourself a bit, but at the back of your mind, you know, you know, it's a story, you know, yeah. <laughs> That's it's right. a, uh, mm. um, so it's, a, you can enjoy the mm. uh, being sc scared. Scared, you know? yeah. Um, which you normally, if it actually happened, you wouldn't enjoy it. You wouldn't. I often hear strange sounds in the night, you know, coming from the roof or outside and it's hard to identify those sounds, you know, mm. <coughs> what's causing them because also sounds get magnified in the yes. silence of the night. Mm. What could be just a rat scuttling around, you know, might sound very sinister or... Hmm. Yeah. His stories have ghosts, fairies and jinns against the backdrop of the hills. Then I, I had located a ghost on this very road, oh. a ghost story. It's called The Whistling Schoolboy. Hmm? Okay. Yes, it's a boy, about the ghost of a boy who actually used to cycle very fast down this road and one day he went over the edge. Hmm? A wave of joy crosses his face as he starts narrating the climax of one of my favourites, A Face in the Dark. He sees this boy <coughs> uh, in the dark when he's coming back to school and uh, the boy is crying on the road and he, he, he look, lifts his face up and he has no eyes, no nose, no mouth, it's just a blank face. Yeah. And the uh, teacher then rushes into the school yeah. And Chokidar is coming around with his lantern and the 
schoolmaster stops him and says, Chokita, there's this boy just outside the gate and uh, he, <coughs> he, has, he has no face, no, no features. Yeah. Yeah. And the Chokita lifts the lantern to his own face and says, was he like, was he like this, sir? Yeah. 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 And, and uh, he, had the, he had no eyes, no nose, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no mouth. And the schoolmaster then uh, <coughs> fainted away. <laughs> oh, had his heart attack. He has a lot to say about films based on his works. Blue Umbrella was, yeah. <coughs> Actually, that was filmed in, um, uh, near Delauzi in, in mm. Chamba, on the, the meadows there. Mm. That was, uh, yeah, the photography was excellent there, and the, cynically it was uh, very pretty. I enjoyed doing that, in devising various ways in which <coughs> she could get rid of her husbands without being caught. <laughs> <laughs> innovative but, uh, ideas, mm, every time coming mm, up with some innovative mm, idea mm, to kill one of her husbands. Yes, right. Uh, <laughs> How challenging was in it? In fact, I left out two or three because I had a few more ideas. Okay. <laughs> I'll pass them on to you. <laughs> Dreams have certain significance, he believes. So, they can also become stories. In this dream, I'm, I'm staying in a forest bungalow <clears throat> and I'm on my own. And <clears throat> I'm sitting in the uh, little veranda read a, with a book and I look up and there's this huge tiger in the clearing right in front. Huh? And the tiger advances towards me and I quickly get up, go inside, lock the door. Hmm? And then I see there's a window open. I go to the window, look out, I see the tiger <laughs> come, has come closer and is circling the bungalow. I shut the window and then I remember the bathroom door is open. So I dash back into close the bathroom door, look out of the window there, see the tiger is closer and he's circling. And then I, um, I'm running around closing doors and windows which have all been open. Mm. Mm. And then I hear it at the front door, thump, thump, thump. It's, uh, mm. it's uh, trying to break the door down. Mm. And it does, it comes crashing in, but that's when I wake up fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> he recalls an innocent request once made by a young reader. I get sometimes very interesting comments from them. Mm. Like the young reader who said, so can't you give us more action in your story? It's a bit slow moving. Mm. <laughs> so I said, I try. <laughs> Most of the books penned by him are based on children. What is so special about them? I wrote, wrote a lot about children and later for children. Mm. I think because my own childhood was uh, was at times a lonely one mm. and uh, so a lot of my early stories were about my own childhood and then I perhaps found I could write about other children too mm. and perhaps understand their <coughs> uh, understand their problems or attitudes or mm. interests. Children are his best critics, he believes. They inspire him and he will continue to craft beautiful stories for them. No wonder the child in him remains intact even at 79.